morning. Welcome to the Youth Leadership St. Louis information session for 2022. So glad that you're here with us to learn more about this fabulous youth leadership program. But before we get into what can you expect and how does this program benefit you and your students, I would love to introduce Dr. Yami Akande Barge, the CEO of Focus St. Louis to bring us a greeting. Yami, why don't you say hello to our guest this morning? Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful day. I am really excited to see that people are still coming into the room to learn about Youth Leadership St. Louis program. For those of you that don't know about FOCUS, we are the region's premier civic leadership organization. We have a collective history of 50 plus years. And I have to share with you that the birth of Youth Leadership St. Louis actually happened with parents who had gone through our Leadership St. Louis program because they felt that their children needed to learn about the issues of the community now while they're also building their leadership skills. So that's the history of the program. We've been around for a couple of decades now. We have very notable alums that are doing great work in the community and some that are joining us today to tell you about their experience how it's shaping their life and how they're looking forward to the future. So I'm sure you're armed with questions to ask about the program. We welcome them and we're glad you're here. So now I'm gonna throw it back over to the team to continue with our session this morning. Thank you, Yami. So glad that you're with us. Um, I don't get to do the, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Shayla Ford. I serve as the Director of Leadership Programs at Focus St. Louis, but I also have the pleasure of serving as the Director of Youth Leadership St. Louis. Yami's correct, we've been around for 30 plus years and I honestly could not do this work without my partner in crime. So I'm gonna invite Harlan Hodge to the screen, sometimes known as Coach, uh, Hodge and ask him to just quickly introduce himself and then we'll get into a quick slide deck with high level information and then interview our alumni who you see waiting in the wings to tell you about their experience. Harlan, why don't you say hello to everyone? Thank you so much, Shayla. As Shayla mentioned, my name is Harlan Hodge. I have the uh, wonderful opportunity to co-facilitate uh, Youth Leadership St. Louis with Shayla and so many other wonderful uh, members and supporters of Youth Leadership St. Louis. Um, I am so excited that, that you're joining us to find out about one of my favorite organizations uh, today. Uh, in my day job, I guess, from my full-time role, I serve as the Senior Manager of Diversity and Inclusion at BJC Healthcare here in St. Louis. So thank you and welcome. All right, so let me share my screen and get into what it is that youth leadership is. And before we do that, Yami, you know what? We didn't really tell them about the mission and vision of what FOCUS does. I'm gonna actually invite you back on. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who FOCUS is? Because we're making the assumption that everyone knows, but in case you don't, I want you to have an opportunity to share about the overall organization then I'll go into more details about Youth Leadership St. Louis. Sure, happy to do so. So as I mentioned before, we've been around for a couple of decades and at one point we were two separate nonprofits. And roughly about 25 years ago, those two nonprofits, Confluence St. Louis and Leadership St. Louis came together. And basically the, the mission and the vision of what we do is we educate leaders on issues in our community. We connect them with each other and because of that, they're inspired to be catalysts for change in our community. And we have multiple programs, one of which we're talking about today, Leadership St. Louis that I mentioned earlier, Women in Leadership that Shayla also serves as the director for that program, our Emerging Leaders Program, which we've had our Youth Leadership St. Louis participants go through that program as well, and our Experience St. Louis Program. Every year, we, we reach up to 10,000 folks, not just in the region, but also nationally, and because of the pandemic globally as well. Um, we have 10,000 plus alums, 75% of them reside in the region, which is really cool. And with the pandemic, I call it the pandemic bonus, we're starting to see people pivot back or boomerang back to our region. 
which is really great. And the fact that they can pick up the phone and continue conversations with alums from many years ago, it's a beautiful thing. So that is a, a short and succinct history of focus uh, to date. And uh, I'm, I'm, I see some familiar faces in the audience already. So looking to learn more about what your questions are going to be. Awesome. Well, with Youth Leadership St. Louis, much like all of the other programs in our organization, we're here to educate leaders, connect leaders, and to facilitate the important conversations. And we do that every day with youth leadership. And so let's get into it. First of all, again, Harlan and I are the co-facilitators of the program. Um, we have another team member that assists us as well. And so we're excited about what we get to do with young people. Right, And so this work is incredible and we always both leave hopeful and even more educated when we're with them, right? And so what we wanna talk about today is just give you a quick overview of the program, talk a little bit about some of the demographics and outcomes that we have. Our alumni are waiting in the wings to share a little bit more about their personal experience and the impact that the program has had upon them. And then we'll take some time for Q and A. You know, so get ready with your questions or jot down some notes. And then finally, we'll wrap up with giving you some important dates to know about for um, joining us for the 2022-23 academic year. So here's what we do know about the program. We, we are founded in 1989, we're over 30 years old. We are internationally recognized and we bring together students from across 30 different schools and or community organizations annually. And so our class sizes range anywhere from 75 to 125 students. And sometimes in years previous to COVID, it's been even higher. But the main thing that we do is we're informing, connecting, preparing, and empowering scholars to become community and civic leaders in our region and beyond. The program is an immersive program that's experiential based and the focus is really through the lens of civic issues education. So we talk about a, a myriad of issues um, or topics in our community that are presenting challenges and opportunities for young people to be involved. We meet one or two times a month during the academic year. And we also um, partner with St. Louis University to offer the students research projects um, that we'll share a little bit more about. You might say, okay, well, what are the benefits of the program? I'm gonna share a little bit here. These are the specific benefits for our students, just a deeper understanding of the region, unparalleled exposure to influential civic business and community leaders, improved leadership collaboration, communi uh, communication, decision-making facilitation and strategic thinking skills. They also are able to develop deep and lasting relationships with a diverse network of peers, as well as adults, um, additional facilitators and our leadership coaches. We found that students in our program have a greater sense of personal commitment and responsibility to our region. They also will have access to our network of alumni and many people who graduate from youth leadership St. Louis come back and participate in additional programs. And we'll share a little bit more about that later. You also might be saying, okay, that's really great. What do the students get? But what do we as partners get? We raise your, part, um, your profile in the community through our partnership and putting your name on our website and listing you as a partner on materials. We're able to supplement student learning through the experiences that we provide outside of the classroom. So for us, the community really is the classroom. We provide bridges to regional civic leaders and other resources. The students gain knowledge, skills, and competencies essential to lead productive lives, uh, participate in the workforce, and assume civic responsibility. Um, and, and also what's something we know is oftentimes, and Harlan, you can chime in here, when schools have issues or challenges or they're needing conflict mediators, they turn to our youth um, graduates or alumni to help them resolve those issues or to take a stand in their school. Um, Harlan, do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, one of the examples, you know, um, as we kind of wrap up this high level overview, but tell us a little bit about one of the examples of where 
our students come in and help. Yeah, so, so really briefly, I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, we identify leaders uh, within the school and those who have potential uh, to be leaders uh, in, in their school and the organizational environment. And so by participating in Focus St. Louis, we not only expose them to lots of different issues, but we give them a, a, a variety of different skill sets. And one of those is the ability to be able to facilitate difficult conversations. And so over the years, um, all of our students, we've, we've kind of sort of just indoctrinated them into this, this processing uh, of, um, of experiences with them. And so uh, you'll hear from the leaders today, but hopefully they still are using some of the tools that we, we shared with them around how to facilitate and sort of our vows uh, for facilitating. You guys remember your AEIOs and use? And what <laughs> happens is if they become really good facilitators, we've seen uh, really tough topics come up for, for schools over the years. And you can imagine since uh, 2015 with Mike Brown and all of the, 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 the unrest and the, the difficult conversations that students need to have, we found that Principals and school leaders have turned to their youth leadership St. Louis graduates to be able to facilitate some of those difficult conversations, not only with their, their classmates, but also with the adults and to be able to bring groups together inside the school community and outside of the school community to be able to dive into those conversations. And, and so hopefully uh, some of our students will have an opportunity to tell us how they've used uh, some of those skills. Awesome, thank you, Harlan. Sure. And finally, I want to share. So we also ask each of our partners to designate um, an advisor slash leadership coach that works with us, attends seminar days, but we provide them training um, that they can use in the classroom and in community, as well as they are able to gain access to Focus St. Louis's forums, webinars, and networking events. So it's an all around win-win for our partners and for us. Um, some of the civic issues that we talk about, um, criminal justice from health, um, you know, regional health and well being to poverty and homelessness to social responsibility and leadership. And so these are some of the pictures. And Harlan, you might remember some of these days, but Mary Fox, um, who's, who's um, now one of the leaders in the, the state of Missouri around uh, criminal justice, she's a public defender. Um, when she comes to our students and challenges them to think about um, what the law says and, and what should be fair or equitable in our criminal justice system, we've actually put on um, pre-COVID, of course, poverty simulations hosted by St. Patrick's Center, where we've given students an opportunity to step foot in the life of a character um, and a family situation to really understand how do you navigate living with not much, but for one month, what is that like? And so Harlan has helped us facilitate that program. And then we've had an opportunity to have lunch at the cafe. Um, We've had a great partner in Nestle Perina. And so we've, we've gone there and had conversations about social responsibility and being leaders in the community. And so the students really touch on a lot of various topics um, so that they can, again, understand the issues as well as think about ways that we can solve those issues and that they are involved in helping to drive that. And so it's a really unique opportunity. The other thing that we're able to do is through a partnership with St. Louis University is offer youth led action research projects. And so our scholars are able to identify an issue that's in their school or community based organization research the issue, brainstorm a plan to improve whatever the issue is, and then pilot the plan and then present their findings. So this is an opportunity again for students to develop those research skills early on and solve complex issues that are first affecting them directly in their school campus or community organization, but it's great practice for them to be involved as community leaders um, as they go on to post-secondary or enter the, the career and workforce, but to come back into our region and really help us to solve some of the, the most um, challenging problems that we face as a region and the opportunity for them to serve in leadership. 
The other thing I just want to share with you is this is a high level overview of the program schedule. You receive that in advance so students can plan um, uh, their time away from the classroom and being with us. Um, some of the demographics are here. We, we have um, almost a balanced gender split, but, but more female than, than males in the, in the last uh, class. You also see the breakdown. So the diversity of our group is it's highly diverse, not only racially, but uh, social and economically, where people live by zip codes. We have 40 different zip codes represented. And so the diversity is on so many levels, but bringing students together so that they can really understand what it's like um, to maybe live in a different part of the community or to experience something differently than maybe their peers, but just to have that empathy and understanding so that they can become better leaders. This is something that we're proud of at the program is our outcomes, the impact that we have on our students. So 91% saying they have an increase in self-management skills, 82% saying they're able to get along or work with others in the team to solve a problem or work on a project. You know, 84% saying an increase in their communication skills. Those are those 21st century skills that our students need to be successful to enter the workforce and to be civic resp civically responsible as adults. Something else that's important to us because we're a civic leadership program, students having an understanding of the issues that affect our community, their willingness to be involved and help us solve them um, and their personal commitment level. You see, we're all in the 90s in those outcomes and that's, that's important. And we're pretty proud of those numbers because when students come in, they are already leaders. We already say that about them, but as they get to know more about themselves and the region, then their interest in making sure that they're part of the solution just increases over time. So. We're getting ready, so I'm giving the cue to our uh, current alumni who are joining us and Harlan that's going to moderate this segment. But I wanted to share with you, you're kind of like, so they go through the program and then what happens to them? What happens to them is they come back and they never leave, right? Or maybe they never leave. I don't think Harlan ever left. He was in one of the very first classes of the program and he stayed with the organization. I'll let Harlan share that with you too as he's doing the round table, but the impact of the organization and the program on him in his formative years was critical to who he is and who he's become as a leader in our region. Our very own um, community, uh, excuse me, Director of Marketing and Communications, Becky Rasmussen, is also a graduate, but she's currently working with Focus and has been on our team for five plus years. We have a few others, Yukindi Valdez, who graduated and has been named Forbes 30 under 30. She started her own diversity company. We have Blake Strode, who is a double uh, focus uh, leader. He went through youth leadership and he also went through Leadership St. Louis, which is the flagship program that the youth program is modeled after. So he's been also recognized as an emerging leader at our What's Right with the Region. And then finally, we have um, our, our one of our other graduates, Erica, who has served on the board in the past and has also gone through our Women in Leadership program. And so we, over the past 30 years, have graduated 3,500 plus young people. And they're all over our community doing awesome work as leaders. And so what I'd love to do now is uh, kick it over to Harlan so that he can do a little bit of conversation time with our current um, alumni who are with us today, who have taken time out of their busy school schedules. They're in college or um, one, one or two are um, on our board of directors and our high school students, mm -hmm. but felt it um, necessary to join us today so they could share the experience. So Harlan, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Shayla. And thank you again for all who have joined us. I'm not gonna waste time because we got a small window here. I could talk about youth leadership St. Louis for days. Um, but you didn't come to hear me. These are our great leaders. We're really excited to have them join us. I'm going to ask you guys a couple of questions. And, you know, in youth leadership fashion, we want you to say your name, uh, tell us your year, tell us a little bit about where you're in school, what you're doing right now, and then answer the question. Can we do that? All right. So I've got Alexis, you're first up. The first question I've got for you is like, how has this program really impacted your life? Alexia, you're on. 
Um, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Alexia. I was in YLSO in, uh, last year, 2021. And uh, it's impacted my life in a lot of ways. Um, I think just being able to communicate with people my age about um, these very important subjects and go through these experiences of um, hearing profound um, speakers and going through these lessons and then being able to debrief afterwards was really um, really inform informative and important for me um, in my junior year. Um, and I think, yeah, just as Shalia is saying in the, the chat, um, it's opened the doors for me to a lot of other opportunities. Um, I'm on the, the focus board. Um, I'm one of two high schoolers on that board and um, I was only able to find that opportunity through YLSL. I was also, um, I facilitated the German American um, Zooms that um, happened um, just this past year. Um, and I think being able to do those things, I was really able to grow my confidence in my speaking skills and um, my leadership skills. Thank you so much, Alexia. Very impressive. I'm going to have to come back and talk about the German American facilitation work. I'd love to get an update on that. Cody, you're up next. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Cody Cornell. I graduated from YLSL in 2020. Um, feels like yesterday, though. Um, Right now, I'm at Western Illinois studying agriculture science with a minor in pre-law. Um, and so as a leader, I think the best thing that youth leadership did for me um, is force me to work with other people I may have never met before. Um, it, it, it puts you right on the edge of your comfort zone. It might not fully push you over that edge, but it definitely puts you, puts you out there more than you would want to go, um, which really, really helped me. Um, to kind of see the problems in St. Louis as an adult, to actually view um, these problems as something that um, I will have to face in the near future, um, which is something I believe is really important for the future of St. Louis and the country as a whole. Great. Thank you, Cody. Uh, Asset, good to see you. Uh, you're up next. Hi, um, my name is Aset. I was also um, YLSL class of 2020, and I'm currently a first year at WashU, uh, planning on studying psychology. Um, so for me, YLSL definitely exposed me to many of the relevant problems um, within the St. Louis community. And I think it was just a really unique opportunity to be able to connect one-on-one -on -one to people that face a lot of these issues or people that are very educated. Um, and what's going on. So it put many of their situations into perspective. And I think also being able to collaborate with students from different backgrounds across the St. Louis region um, really allowed us to like evaluate our part and what we can do as young leaders to help. Great, thank you. Johnny. Hello, I'm Johnny Yeldum. Um, I'm also a YLSO class of 2020, and I'm also a first year at WashU right here in St. Louis. Um, and in regards to the question, I would say um, along the lines of what Cody said, but um, YLSO really helped transform me from a passive participant to someone who's more of an active leader and facilitator. And I think that's just due to the program. It's very difficult to kind of sit back and not participate, just like the nature of the activities we do and the conversations we have like require the input of everyone um, since everyone comes from different backgrounds and like has a different experience. Um, and everyone kind of has the opportunity to step up and lead. Um, and we were encouraged to do so. Um, and at other times, you know, we were, we kind of learned when to step back and let other people share their perspective. So I really thank Youth uh, Leadership St. Louis for kind of creating this space for us to have like thought provoking conversations and um, giving us the opportunity to lead these conversations as well. Great, great job. You guys have given us the, the context uh, for Youth Leadership St. Louis, how everything works. Excellent job. Um, now I want you to sort of dig back into your memory. Some of you guys are going back a little further than others, uh, but 
Was there an event, was there a session, um, some part of our civic engagement that really stood out for you? And then the second part of that question is, how have you been able to sort of apply the lessons that you learned, the observations that, you, that you've made to your life? I'm just gonna throw that out there. Anybody wanna take on that uh, first? What stood out for you? How did it impact you? How is it applying to your life? I think one specific lesson I specifically remember was um, when we did those um, options with um, how you would manage your money and your time in a month if you were running on poverty mm -hmm. level uh, income. Mm -hmm. And I think um, I was really able to um, realize what that meant, you know, that doesn't just mean you know, you're not, you're unable to afford things because of, I don't know what situation, but it's specifics, like you can't support your children, you can't feed your family, uh, all these um, things I didn't consider before. And I think that really helped me to empathize with people in those situations more so than I had before. Um, and I think, just being able to uh, really see that, um, especially knowing the divide in, in St. Louis, the Del Mar divide, and how some people have, you know, easy opportunities their whole lives and other people are born in those situations. Um, it, it makes you upset and it makes you want to do something about it. Great. Thank you so much, Alexia. Anybody else? Yeah, I can go. Um, the day that really impacted me um, the most was the poverty and homelessness day at the St. Patrick Center. Um, just because I feel like there is such a great stigmatism against the homeless um, in our society, whether in America as a whole or St. Louis. Um, I feel like sometimes we walk past these people in the street and thinking they're below us or um, not part of our society. Um, and that day really changed my whole, my whole perspective on the idea of poverty because during that day, you actually get to eat lunch with um, the St. Patrick um, homeless that come in to eat. And I remember sitting next to somebody <clears throat> and um, they were one of the best people I've ever met. I had such a great conversation with them and it was just an incredible awakening and experience that this person um, is just as important as I am. This person um, deserves everything that I have uh, as a person. So that was really just a really awakening moment for me. Cody and Alexia, you, um, you just reminded me, it was 30 years ago that I first experienced um, the, what was a little bit of a different poverty simulation with Youth Leadership St. Louis. We actually spent the night at a homeless shelter, which is not legal anymore. We didn't do that. But the, the impact that it had on me is that I became more empathetic like you, uh, but it, also, it is also the reason why I conduct the poverty simulation today uh, is because of that experience. So thank you for that reflection. Aset and Johnny, you want to jump in or do you want me to get to my last question? Because I know we've got just a few minutes. Well, let me do that. Way. Let me jump to the to my last question. So, what's your biggest aha moment? Right. So, you had an opportunity to go through Youth Leadership St. Louis. You know, what's the thing that you feel like you're going to carry with you um, forward as you go go through this um, uh, through life? Now, being a part of Youth Leadership St. Louis and an alum, Johnny, I'm going to go to you first. Sure. Um, I think my biggest takeaway is kind of just. The development of my critical thinking skills just because so as I mentioned before like the the people who participate in this program they come from all different backgrounds they come from all different parts of the region um, and that's kind of what made our conversation so meaningful just that everyone is kind of bringing their own life story um, to the table so my takeaway is not only that like diversity of perspective is important but also that it's important to kind of question your own thoughts, your own beliefs, your own biases, and think about how your life story, your background um, kind of shapes who you are and what you believe. 
Um, Cause then you can apply that to other people and start thinking about, you know, like how does their background uh, like shape who they are? Um, so this kind of like critical thinking and learning how to apply to myself and others uh, helped me develop as a leader. Beautiful, thank you, Johnny. I said you've got the final word on this part of our segment. Awesome. Um, I definitely agree with everything Johnny said. And also, I think my biggest aha moment was that um, Focus St. Louis really just provided a platform to get started right away with um, all the work uh, that we'd already done during the program. So just getting more involved in the community and being given um, so many connections and opportunities throughout the program that um, I could use for the future. So it was just definitely very motivating to know that um, I had people I could connect with afterwards that are equally motivated to get started doing work and learning more about all these issues. Beautiful, thank you so much. Listen, um, we've got, an, I think we've got a few minutes. Shayla, you give me uh, other uh, uh, guidance, but I think we've got an opportunity to hear a few questions uh, from the chat. Uh, for our alums. So if we've got any questions that you would like to ask our panelists now, we can post those in the chat. Is that right? Is, is Kayla gonna pull those up for us? Yes, if there's any questions, please feel free to raise your hand or post it in the chat. And while we're waiting for a couple of questions to come through, what I'd like to do is, we, we mentioned this um, German American sister city youth yeah. forum. And I wanna bring that back to the table because not only are we connecting with leaders, young people in our region, civic leaders, business leaders in our region, but we're, we've been able through a partnership with the German um, American sister city project to connect with leaders um, from Germany. So we're, we were part of a project um, from, actually we're having a final day in, in February, um, but we started last year and, and some of the students who are here today served as the advisory council to that meeting. And we had five cities from the US, five cities from Germany, we were paired up. And then we had virtual sessions um, due to COVID, because the idea was that we would travel abroad and meet each other, but that that was not that was not possible. But virtually, we were able to have conversations about youth engagement, um, you know, and 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 leadership in 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 our cities and in our country. We we were able to talk about climate change. We were able to talk about racial justice and equity, and what does that mean um, for students who are living in these communities and these cities. And so we had. Um, some sessions where it was just our students with our sister city, which is Stuttgart, um, and we've got a great alliance with them here locally, but then there were sessions where we were all together, so 10 cities, um, American students, German students coming together with leaders, global leaders to talk about various issues, and so that was an amazing opportunity as well, and so Johnny, I'm going to pick on you. Um, you, you were part of that as well as Alexia and Aset. And so why don't you maybe tell us just one takeaway from that experience um, before we answer some uh, questions from our audience. Sure, um, so the German American uh, Sister Cities Youth Forum I think was a great opportunity that kind of stemmed from my participation in uh, Youth Leadership St. Louis, but it was particularly um, interesting to me because I'm hoping to study global studies and uh, at Wash U. So it's kind of related. Um, but so we were fortunate enough to be able to hear from many different speakers, um, both in Europe, um, from the Germany side, but also from uh, United States, not just from the St. Louis region, we had different professors and um, different speakers from all across the country. Um, and then after usually hearing these speakers for an hour, we would break out into our own um, breakout rooms with our sister cities and then have conversations um, in small groups um, so there, it was very interesting to hear um, kind of the German perspective on all these same issues that we talk about uh, in our society, in our classes as well. Awesome. Thank you. There are a couple of questions in the chat. So Harlan, I'm going to yeah. take one and throw it out. Um, sure. So one of them says, did the students share their learning with their parents at, um, at home and in their school community? So anybody want to answer that question. After you did your learning and youth leadership, did you go home and talk about it with your parents or your peers or at school? And, and if so, what were those conversations like? 
I can I can talk a little on this one. Um, so, oh, I, d- I definitely told my parents about it. You know, you come home and they're like, how was your day? You explain that. But I kind of want to talk a little more about the, the, the school side. We talked about the action research project. So um, every school that is involved in the youth leadership program uh, identifies a problem or a concern that that school has as a whole. And then you as a group, um, because there's about how many per school, about three to four students per school, will then work on that problem and try to uh, solve it within your school. So the ideas that are presented in youth leadership are very um, connected with your school community because you're trying to solve that problem within your school. Anybody else I, want to respond? Okay, go ahead, Alexia. Um, I think when something really impacted me or um, shocked me in one of our meetings, I would definitely share it with people I knew. Um, for example, when I first learned about, you know, how your zip code can um, determine the age you live to uh, by a difference, I think, up to 10 years, um, that. I had never realized that it just a number made such a, or a location made such a huge impact. And I think just being able to share that with those around me was really important in my experience in wireless. Thank you. Harlan, there's a couple other questions. Are you able to see them? You wanna ask them? I, I love this question. It actually was one of the first ones that popped up and it's about sort of you connecting uh, with your, uh, your youth leadership class um, and have you reconnected or stay connected with those folks. And I have to say that I am still to this day very close with several of my youth leadership St. Louis um, uh, classmates. As a matter of fact, we've been heavily involved with uh, the revitalization of St. Louis's downtown. We've been on a Uh, sort of a collective mission to make St. Louis an attractive place and keep people from moving away from St. Louis. And so I'd love to hear about you guys. Are you still connected with with your classmates? I think even though my entire experience was over Zoom and so, you know, there's that problem of really connecting with people, we still, because we had those breakout rooms and those um, meaningful conversations, I did uh, connect with some people outside of the program. Um, it, YLSL is a really good space for um, networking with people and, and finding people your age with similar interests. Um, and so I'd love to be able to meet with those people in person again, I, you know, whenever we can. But, um, you know, for now, it's just through social media and other networking platforms. And uh, for me personally, we were talking about this just before the call, but um, so not only are Set and I both at WashU, but we both, uh, we had a class together last semester. So that was an interesting connection, um, a way that we were able to keep up, but um, also with other people. Um, I think there are a few other people who graduated from YLSL at WashU, but in, in general, I've been able to keep up with uh, friends that I've made and people I've connected with on social media as well. I see another question in the chat, um, Harlan, about GPA attendance and is that required for students to participate? And yes and no. So yes, we want students to be um, academically stable and doing really well in the program, but we don't have to have the straight A student. We need the student that has demonstrated or expressed interest in leadership or you see leadership potential in them. We want them to be able to juggle, yes, their current school schedule along with our schedule, which again, we have those program dates outlined a year in advance so that they can plan accordingly. Um, And we do ask for attendance. Now our attendance rules, we've, we've given a lot of grace during the pandemic time because it's been hard for students. You know, first we went fully virtual and folks weren't ready for it. And now we're coming back in person in terms of students at school. Um, And and that was a hard transition. And so currently youth leadership um, does have requirements and expectations of students, but 
We also work with students one on one case by case um, to really meet their needs as leaders. We don't want something to become a barrier for their participation if we're able to resolve it because one thing that we're you know, clear on as, an, as, an, as a program is that young people have the solutions to the problems that they face. Even navigating, you know, exam time or being out of class to be in our community classroom or, you know, all those things that come up in life um, that's, that are important to them. We want them to be able to have a voice and have agency. So great question. Um, and more of that is on our website and, and any information that was included beforehand. Harlan, do you have a, I, I do wanna bring someone on screen with us, but Harlan, I wanna see if there's any final questions or comments you wanna make um, as we wrap up the Q&A or the, the, the Q&A session. And then I wanna bring a, a guest on to introduce them to, to introduce her to everyone. Good, I'm, I'm, I'm going to um, ask, that one of our uh, esteemed graduates answer that question. Um, I'm, do any of you have any final parting thoughts before we move on beyond the alumni section? Cody, Johnny. Yes. Oh, I, I, I didn't know who was gonna jump in there. I, I saw Johnny came off of mute first, Cody. So Johnny's got. <laughs> sure, um, I was just gonna say maybe, um, so like my one hesitation coming into while I saw, I remember kind of being nervous about missing class um, or things like that. Um, but in the end, all of my teachers were super understanding. It all worked out perfectly. Um, and I'm just very glad that I did make this decision to participate in the program because I think all of the experiences and everything I got out of it made it very worth it. Great. Thank you so much. And Cody, we'll, we'll give you an opportunity to. Thank you. Um, I would just say <clears throat> keep an open mind um, and try and step out of your comfort zone. I know it can be hard, but just just challenge yourself to do it. And it, if you do, it's it's very rewarding. Good. Thank you guys so much. You're absolutely wonderful. Remember, you're part of the Focus St. Louis family. So uh, we're taking credit for all of your wonderful success. And so we'll be <laughs> sending you donation um, uh, solicitation very shortly. <laughs> Thank you, <Eva. laughs> Thank you uh, Alexia, Cody, Johnny, and Aset for joining us. Um, the, the next person I'd like to bring on is the newest member of our team. Her name is Kate Hanford. She's actually just started this week with Focus, but we have the pleasure of Kate joining our team. So I just wanted her to come on screen and say hello because as individuals are making um, decisions about partnering with Focus St. Louis, specifically Youth Leadership St. Louis, you might have a conversation with Kate. So Kate, why don't you do a quick introduction and say hello to everyone? Good morning. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself. Um, as Shayla mentioned, my name is Kate Hanford. I come from the St. Louis Science Center 11 years. Um, I started in college and I just kind of never left. Um, I was involved in education programs on and off site. So what that means is it was reading and doing STEM activities with uh, pre-K kids one day, exploding a pumpkin at a nursing home the next day, and then recruiting um, diverse students across the greater St. Louis area to meet with and ask questions with Mae Jemison. Um, that was a really cool experience. So um, a lot of different things, but I'm so excited to be inspired this morning by hearing all of your um, experiences and um, opportunities that, that the youth are provided by this program and um, to work more with, with the network and the, the community leaders in, in St. Louis and the, the German program that wasn't in my onboarding uh, stuff. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm learning so much. Awesome. Well, we're glad uh, for you to, to be on our team and, and joining and helping us to really develop um, the space and the platform for young people to explore who they are as leaders. And, and what Cody said is what we, it's kind of our mantra, right? Harlan, we say, we want you to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. So we are always pushing students um, beyond their, their comfort zone so that the magic can happen within and that they can become the leaders that we know that they already are. So um, again, we just wanna say thank you to everyone for coming. Um, the last final notes that I wanna share, I'm, gonna, I'm sharing my screen now so that you can see this is next steps, right? So the next steps are this. 
we want you to decide to partner with us. So we have intent to participate forms that are due on January 28th. And what that means is you complete the form to say, yes, I want to partner. This is the school um, you can have as between four and 10 students. And then we want you to identify if you're a new partner, someone that can be the leadership coach that we'll begin to work with. We've got other dates there, but I want you to just make the best decision that you can make for some of the students at your school or your community organization. That's signing the intent form and getting it back to us by January 28th. And from there, it triggers the rest of these processes and timelines that you see on the screen. What you'll get after the today is a survey um, via email as well as an email to the link for the intent form. If you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to myself, to Kate, to Harlan. We'll, we'll be happy to answer your questions and let you know, you know what you need to know to get to yes. And another thing, we always are, like we said, we not only educate leaders, we connect leaders. So if you wanna connect with me, go ahead and click on the QR code. That'll get you to my LinkedIn page. We love to be connected to leaders and share information about what's happening. Um, join us, connect with us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, um, follow Focus St. Louis so you can keep abreast of all of the other wonderful things that we're doing as an organization. And again, we just thank you for you coming out and giving us some time this morning to highlight these young leaders and the great work that we're doing in St. Louis through Youth Leadership St. Louis. So thank you again for coming. Harlan, do you have a final word? I know you I do. I love your QR code. We're now connected on Facebook, <laughs> on, on, on uh, LinkedIn. I'm, I'm gonna copy that. I need to do something similar. Listen, uh, thank you all for joining us. I love Saint, uh, Youth Leadership St. Louis and Focus St. Louis. And so uh, if there's anything we can do to help you make uh, that decision or guide you along the way, we're here to help. All right. Well, that concludes our time for today. Again, thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Have a great day. Thanks to all of our students. Thanks, alums. Thank you.